All right, folks. So I would like to take a moment to uh, break away from the Avery case. I know, shocking. Um, to talk about something that, you know, I know I talk about marriage a lot and I talk about marriage for one very fundamental reason. I'm going to kill my cat. <laughs> That's not the reason. My cat is insane. She keeps pushing her way out of out of windows or like sneaking out of the door when you when you open it just for a second, like to come in or go out. And then she will be gone all day. And then when the temperature drops because the sun's gone down, she sits at my office door and starts rowing. I'm sure you can hear her. I'm going to pause this for a second and let this moron in. Hold on. And you know what's so funny about this? Is this isn't even my cat. This is my husband's cat. And for whatever reason, she's decided I'm her mother. So <laughs> she attaches herself to my butt. It's fine, honey. I've got it. Um, it's, it's insane. <laughs> I don't even get it. I've got enough kids. Now, I want to talk about marriage pre precisely because I don't think anybody takes it as seriously as they should anymore. And this irritates the fuck out of me. Now, I want something understand understood. You know, I'm not speaking out my ass. I have been married before. Uh, I was married very young. I discovered I was pregnant with my oldest son when I was 18 years old, about uh, two or three months before I graduated high school. And I was I didn't want to get married. I did not want to get married at that point. I didn't see the point of getting married just because I was pregnant. But I got talked into it by his family, which is very traditional. You know, his family is Mexican. Now, I'm not saying that they're from Mexico, but that is their lineage. And they're very traditional and they're Catholic on top of that. Yeah, fucking great, Casey. Procreate with the Catholic. I'm pagan. Um... And so I got a lot of pressure from his family and got a lot of pressure from my mom, you know, and finally I was just like, fine, you know, fine, let's do this thing. And sure enough, I wound up divorced with two kids by the age of 20. And I don't consider it a failed marriage. I consider it an ended marriage because nothing I feel is failed if you learn something from it. And I did. I learned a lot from it. And then when I got together with my husband, we were actually together almost four years before we, we got married. And I see a lot of these girls. And when I say girls, I'm not talking like under 18. I'm talking about women over the age of 18 who are not fucking mature. I see a lot of these girls uh, making a big to do about, you know, oh, well, if he doesn't propose by him, by then... I'm leaving and and they give their boyfriends these ultimatums. You know, if you don't marry me by this day, I'm done with you. And the boyfriend's like, well, shit, you know, do I marry her? Or do I not marry her? I mean, you're basically blackmailing him into marrying you. You're giving him an ultimatum, which is just rude. Both people have to be ready to make that commitment in order for a marriage to work. But see, I don't think that they want a marriage. I think what they want is a big fat rock and all the attention that comes with being a bride and they want a big fancy wedding and then the big fancy wedding happens and they're $40,000 in debt and then they have to settle down and actually be a wife and they find out that it's not the happily ever after that's portrayed in fairy tales it's work it is actual work yeah now my cat's trying to fucking get up here and make me pet her fabulous and it scares the shit out of them and before you know it the fucking Marriage is tanked before they've even been married three years. And it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, I actually really like how my husband and I did it. You know, we we had our four years. And during that four years, we, uh, we actually had our children. And <clears throat> we only married after we had our last child. <laughs> Because he made cute babies. I saw his his oldest daughter. She was adorable. I was like, well, fuck. If he makes that cute of babies, I want some. Because I'm weird. But, you know, and I did have a deadline for my husband. But it wasn't really a deadline for him. It was a deadline for myself. It was, if he doesn't propose to me by this 
day, a year from now. I don't even fucking remember what date it was, but I, I told myself, you know, give yourself another year, Casey. If he doesn't propose by then, apparently it's not meant to be and just walk away. And it was more deadline for me than anything else, but I never told him that he was on a deadline. I just told myself because the deadline was for me. It was for me to make up my mind and for me to say, you know, if he doesn't propose by this day, you know, you're going to have to make some serious decisions here, honey. And fortunately for my husband and for myself, he actually exceeded the deadline. He proposed within two months of me telling myself this. And, you know, now we have this wonderful marriage and we have this wonderful relationship and a great family. And my husband, <clears throat> I know I've said this before, he is a wounded veteran. He is a, a, an honorably discharged, 100% disability rated veteran. He has been diagnosed with bipolar 2 disorder and PTSD. These are not easy disorders. And they are not only his to deal with. Uh, the effects do reverberate through the marriage and through the family. Fortunately, the kids are really understanding. They just understand that sometimes daddy, you know, stays in his room. And I love that about my husband. When he's getting to a really weird place, he'll isolate himself and, you know, keep it as far away from the kids as he can. And the thing is, is that I've heard so many people, because, you know, with bipolar 2 disorder, they get really mean and they always pick one person to be their target, usually the person that's closest to them. Nine times out of 10, the spouse. And I've had so many people tell me, why don't you just leave him? Why don't you just leave him? You know, you know, he gets like this. And I'm like, yeah, but that's not all he is. That's not all that our marriage is. Our marriage is actually very healthy. It's just sometimes he cycles. And, you know, guess what? I'm female. I cycle too. <laughs> and when my husband comes out of his cycle, he always, always tries to make up for it. And I always tell him, you know, baby, you don't have to make up for it. I knew what I was getting into when I signed on. In fact, the day that my husband and I moved in together, he walked up to me with his medical file. And, I mean, a medical file this thick. And he slapped it down in front of me on the coffee table. And he said, here, I want you to read this from beginning to end. And I want you to know what you're getting yourself into. And I, I found that so refreshing because how many fucking times have we gotten into relationships with people only to discover later that they're like narcissists or psychopaths or just, you know, flat out fucking odd. You know, no, he walked up to me, fucking laid it out on the table literally and said, here, this is everything that's happened to me. These are my diagnosis. This is what's going on. And I want you to be fully informed. And, you know, I had to respect that. And I walked into this relationship with my eyes wide open. I knew that it was not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but is it worth it? Hell yes, it is completely worth it. Um, you know, sometimes his meds won't get here in time and he'll go through some withdrawal symptoms for a few days. But you best believe that once he gets those meds back and he's back on par, he spoils the shit out of me for days because he feels like he placed a burden on me that he didn't place on me. There is no burden. He's my husband. We back each other up. And I don't think a lot of people realize that that is how marriage works. It is a team work situation. Sometimes your husband will pick up your slack and sometimes you'll pick up your husband's slack. And, you know, ladies, I'm not picking on you specifically. You know, guys, you got to do your work fucking too. You have to put in your work and you have to, you know, when she has a baby, don't expect to come home three days after she gets home from the hospital and have fucking dinner on the table and the house cleaned. That's rude. You know, you do something. She just pushed your kid out of her vagina. You bring home some Chinese. Come home and run the vacuum cleaner. Take care of her. Because when you're sick, we take care of you. It's the same thing, guys. Give and take. That's what marriage is. And I'm not saying this like I'm a marriage expert, but what I am saying is this is what has worked for me. And Lord knows that I've had plenty of opportunities to fuck it up. That is the final video for the evening. We will see you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching.